previously on Renaissance City. My intention is to identify where King is. That's really all I want to do. Great. Cotton has a gun. You sound nervous. <laughs> right, I know. Cotton has a gun. Oh, shit. Shade, we need stairs. We need to go down one level. Shadow, you remember the donation had been asked for a new well to be dug? We'll count back from 300. Oh, God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll meet back here. Shadow, you make your way to the well. The cover on the well is its way more secure than what you are used to seeing. There's an abnormal amount of bars and, you know, mechanisms holding this plate down on top of this well. Dude, tell me you guys didn't have in your mind that that stonework well with the bucket. You weren't thinking that kind of well. That's what I saw the whole time. You open it up. There is a spiral staircase leading down. The two of you see these guard units coming up out of the floor. You would assume that they might be coming to respond to the ruckus. You're not really sure, but they see you too. And then he's just going to take that cleaver and he's just going to go bing, 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 bing. And Raymond's is like 19, 18, 17, 16. Count down to zero and Shadow appears in the dining room. My plan was to have Raymond join us and all three of us go down the stairs in the well. You close the door behind you. The three of you embrace in a bro hug. When we get to the bottom of these stairs, rip them down so nothing can come in. When you reached out with your telepathy this time, back in the building, on the second floor, you think, is George Buster. There he is. Cotton, as you look in the window, you see two young girls. You think they might be twins? The first door on your left, um, you see a man, shadow, laying in a ball on the floor, is King. The third room on your left, Cotton, she's probably a teenage girl. She has shock white hair. Raymond, you see your friends uh, doing all that they can to yank this door open. Raymond comes out full speed. Raymond gonna loop big and crash the door. The three of you standing in the doorway as the dust starts to settle and King laying there on the floor in a ball. Feathers strewn everywhere. He looks sickly. It's as if he's lost 200 pounds. He is skin and bones. Oh my God. He has patches of fur missing, feathers lost from his wings. King is dying. No, it's Cotton's turn to give us a recap. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, we've only had a king recap, so this will be That's interesting. True. So, like, we ran across the roof of a hospital and broke in, found some robots, and ran down a well. Well, well. Perfect. And now we're ready. Got it in one. Nice. Left out zero critical details. Oh, we also mind fucked a bunch of innocents. That was fun. We? There we go. We? Here's the thing. Here's the fucking thing. And I've been thinking about this since it happened. You motherfuckers. I wasn't doing that on fucking purpose. And you fuckers. You two other players that are trying to play my game for me every fucking time and have to Uh comment and have to criticize and have to fucking make me do a bunch of shit I'm not comfortable doing. You made me do that shit. You pressured me into it. I had nothing to do with that. It's true. It was the other two this time. Yep. I had nothing to do with that. Sons of bitches. Make your own decisions. Okay, but in my own defense, and Chris, I apologize if I if I forced you to do something that you weren't wanting to do. I mean, I have free will, but still. I, I, I you you have a pattern of sometimes forgetting the powers that you have. 
And so I didn't really, I wasn't saying it as, and honestly, I wasn't saying it as instruction. It was just like suggestion. I know. And I took your suggestion right into the minds of 16 innocent people. And fucked them. Not all of them innocent, probably. I mean, the nurse was just going to work. Yeah, but you know, she may have had that coming. Yeah, she probably rapes babies. Likely. I mean, truth is, we don't know about these other motherfuckers in these other rooms. They could all be real bad news. True that. Or they could be allies. Also true. Should we be doing a real jail break here? Should we be opening all the doors? I don't know. And the thing is, Raymond doesn't know about everybody else. He just ran through that hall and, and found King. As far as I know, I just want to like save King and save George. That seems so shitty to me. Does it? It does. It does, but these other... Did you say out loud that, that you had found George? That you know that George is there? Yes. Yes. He did say that. I mean, I said that I I felt him or whatever. So we're here for George, too. And, you know, kind of curious that he would be in here with King. He's not down in the basement. He's up in the sanatorium. Oh. Oh, damn it. Might have to come back to George. All right. Recap done. Give me the last 15 seconds so I can feel the moment. Raymond smashed the door open. Plaster dust fills the room. And as it settles, there's King. You see feathers. Emaciated King. Malting, skin hanging off. Patches of hair missing or falling out or pulled out. You're not sure. Right. And from what we can tell, his pubis pocket completely missing. Oh, it's just shriveled up. It's shriveled up. You can see the toothbrushes sticking out of it. It's so shriveled. That makes sense. That does make sense. He's dehydrated. God, what were they doing to him? And that's the end? Nothing else happened? Nothing was said? No, that was it. Oh, okay. That was it. So, the three of you, Spartan, Demon Shade, and Cotton Dearborn, are standing in the doorway. King, balled up on the floor, doesn't even seem to have reacted to the commotion the explosion of the door any of it I want to get inside King's head and make him walk out with us okay how are you going to do that what do you mean I mean how are you going to do that with mind control okay roll mind control well I'm going to attempt to three three successes correct Um, how do you navigate an unconscious mind okay so it's not possible it's not what I said. I said, how do you navigate an unconscious mind? I know. Okay, so you're declaring it not possible. So um, you you run into a wall of darkness and cannot seem to make a connection. Oh, you were asking me for a narrative. I didn't understand that. Do you want to do you want to go back and take the narrative back? There you go. Are you gonna go like Inception? Are you afraid if you plant? something too deep he'll never recover i'm afraid you know what i'm afraid of with with the narrative I, yes i do no you don't i was gonna tell you so you tell me then because long ago in a in an episode i don't know even probably a year ago um you and jazz had concocted something in the background and hadn't included me and tried to um tried to tried to insert something into the story and I heard what you were trying to do, um, but you were taking one of the very few concrete plot points that I had, um, and so I turned it back around. And ever since then, you have been scared that you're going to. Mess yeah, but it's not up. as simple as that. I, I'm a, I psychologically I have trouble with big pauses. I fill pauses, and. I don't want to think on your time. You know what I mean? Like I have, I have trouble pausing to think and develop. And so I, I get anxious. I just need to pause sometimes and take a second. Feel free. I reach into King's mind and it's like walking through an empty hallway. 
He's not engaged. He's not alert. I'm not able to pull any strings, make things happen. And so in the in the darkness, in the absence of King, I pull back out to try to make an attempt at something else. I can't get in there, guys. He's he's out of it. He's not with us. He is alive, though. Do we just throw him over our shoulder and walk him out of here? Hold on, hold on. Raymond's going to run over to him and just pick his head up off the floor and kind of, you know, king. King. Shake him a little bit. See if he won't come to. Are you are you trying to use a skill or are you just... No, I'm just using... Are you wanting you know, to make a roll of some sort? Just another person, you know. Um, yeah, I don't have I don't have anything that's gonna wake him up or anything. Okay. Yeah, he's completely limp and unconscious. Okay, he's not coming to. Let's get out of here. Shadow runs over, grabs King, throws him over his shoulder. Let's roll. Move fast. Remember where the car's at. Otten runs ahead, grabs the keys from the nurse and starts to unlock the other doors. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, as you as you run by um to to you know what I mean to get to the nurse to to grab the keys, um the the taller man, you know, with the brown hair kind of he you know he, as you run by, he's kind of banging on the window as if to get your attention. You grab the keys. Which doors do you unlock first? The girl with the white eyes. Okay. You unlock the door, um, and she stands there and smiles. And it's this, it's not a forced smile by any stretch. It's, it's, you know, she's almost in relief, it seems. You're welcome to join us, or you're welcome to go your own way. Uh, we mean you no harm. Who are you? If you want to live, come with us. Let's go. We're the power walkers, and we gotta get we gotta get the hell out of here. Go. We're going. You say get the hell out of here, and she completely. Well, I'll tell you what. Everybody, roll perception. How about that? All right. One. Shadow's still down here. I thought he bailed with King. I feel like uh, we're falling behind. I mean, it's, it's only been like two seconds. Yeah, I haven't made it that far. He doesn't even know where he's going. We can't get up the way we came in. Barton got one. Barton got one. Shadow got five. Cotton got one. Shadow got five. Cotton, Spartan, you have no idea where this girl has gone. She disappears from your sight. Demon Shade, you feel a breeze go by you and just a flash in your eye. As whoever came out of this room, um, you're not really sure because you weren't paying attention, but you see this blue streak of of hair you just run right past you and out the door. Ooh, she fast. Let's go. Cotton. Cotton. I go let the tall man out. Yeah, what's up? Didn't you say that George was in here in the in the sanitarium, you thought? He's on the opposite side. He's over where your friend was. Can you reach out to him with your mind and somehow suggest if he if he wants to leave, he can meet us? He's locked in a room, I think. Well, I thought maybe with all the commotion, there was, you know, things were going haywire. I don't know. I mean, I can, I can tell him that, but I don't know if he can get out. We can try. I thought we'd probably have to go after him. We might have to, but if he can meet us, that might be great. Okay. Can I try mind control on George? Um, yes. I want you to, first, I want you to roll perception. I want, you know what I mean? I want, I, I just want to make sure that you have enough. If I'm now rolling perception first, does that mean what I just rolled doesn't count? No, no, no. What you rolled, what you rolled is counts as your mind control roll. But I want oh, you fuck. also, or either way, 
You can roll okay, the other way. I want a new. You're, I want a new dice, control roll. Your your dice numbers are are different rolls, right? I got a two. You got a two. Yeah. For, for mind control. True. Okay. No. Well, no. 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 For perception. For perception. Okay. What did you roll for mind control? Well, I was gonna roll it again, but I also rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it, and you had just kind of given me permission to roll it again, so I was looking forward to that. Well, roll it again. I don't give a shit. All right. Use a resolve. Make it happen. Um, last time I tried that, I got shot down five. Oh, there you go. Five for mind control? Yeah. What What are you saying? What are you doing? Throw it out there. Give me the narrative. I'm reaching out to see where his mind is. And if it's accessible, and when I get into it, I'm just going to tell him, move your feet, get out of there, meet us in the front yard. By the time you count to 300, we'll be there to (laughs) receive you. Perfect. Slowly, though. (laughs) But slowly. But slowly. (laughs) slowly. Move, move, slowly. Count very slowly. Count very slowly on your way to 300. Move we'll be very fast. <laughs> Count down from 300 very slowly. Yeah, he's going to be walking the halls in each step. One. <laughs> no. 298. 297. 299. 296. Right. 295. 294. Yeah, it's going to take a long time for him to get out there. He will. <laughs> 20 yeah. minutes later. It's okay. You'll be fighting guard units the whole time anyway. Um, <laughs> exactly. Okay. So you, um, Cotton, you open the door and um, I need you to roll toughness, please. All right. Uh-oh. Uh oh. That would be a two. A two for toughness? Correct. The door opens and you get ill. Um, you get nauseous and um, there's this burning sensation on your entire body um your skin feels like it's on fire and um you vomit uh right there in the doorway and this guy uh backs up to the back of the room and is like i'm I, i'm so very sorry uh i'm so very sorry i slam the door and lock it no 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 i just need to keep my distance i'm sorry i i've i'm, I'm out of swords please please don't keep me in here I saw your friend, the Scarlet Spartan. I'm Captain X. I'm Captain X. Keep that door open, Cotton. You know this guy? You all know who Captain X is. Yeah. Captain X is the first superhero of Renaissance City. His name is Frank Miller. Uh, He was a veteran, is a veteran of World War I, um, and was involved in a a freak accident while while in the war. He was a, he was a, uh, what's the word? What are the doctors in? A medic. He, yeah, he was he was a medic in the army, and um, was a, a radiologist. He's from Detroit. He he's he's been written about and written about and written about. But he disappeared. I don't know. Probably a year ago, maybe not quite. And he he still talked about and and but he he hasn't been seen in in quite a while, and the. The accident caused him to have this X-ray power. So he uh, he's a very dangerous person if it's not under control, but is also the first hero of Renaissance City. Okay. I unlock the door and leave it closed and quickly move on to the next and unlock it. Isn't Captain X like... Permanently sepia. Permanently what? Sepia colored. Oh, that's unnerving. Nice. I thought you were trying to say septic. Sepia. Sepia? Sepia? Yeah. That word no longer has meaning. (laughs) Well, yeah, of course it does. No, you've said it too many times. It's nonsense now. Sepia. But do you know what I'm talking about? Sepia. Giuseppia. It makes Giuseppe. it in noodles. It makes it in eggs and eggs. 
He's related to our equipment guy. <laughs> the troubadour? Right. We gotta find him, too. Nah. We'll just get a new set of suspenders and hold these pants up. We'll be fine. So you saw a room with um, two, one young, other, right? two young girls that appeared to be twins. Yeah. Um, and then there was a room with um, with a small person, um, a, a man, an African-American man um, that was, you know, uh, you would guess maybe four feet tall. This is the small uh, dark skinned man. You open that door. And he turns. Hey, we're we're not here to harm you. You're welcome to join us or go on your own way. Well, I guess I'll be going my own way. <laughs> Fine. Okay, cool. Whatever. And he walks past you and uh, puts his hand on the metal door frame and turns the corner past you. Um, and he completely turns the same color as the door frame. You see just his entire body, not his clothes, but all of his skin, his entire body, his eyes, everything just turn into this kind of um, blue painted metal. Nice. Thanks for your help. Have a good one. All right. I'm going to go unlock the twins. Oh, shit. Here's Scarlet Spartan. Hey, we need to uh, move fast. I, 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 I met you. I met you uh, when you were on the, the, the factory floor at the, at the GM plant. You shook my hand. There you go. Man. Hey, more importantly, I got to shake your hand. I'm, I'm Teddy. Teddy, you call me Raymond. Let's go. So you go back to the room um, with, the, with the twin girls in it and unlock the door. And um, this young girl is standing there, kind of sandy, blonde hair, tousled, looks like, you know, I mean, it looks like she's been living in this room without a shower for a month, you know, her hair is must and unkempt and, um, but there's only one girl. There is not a second girl in there. And she kind of backs up. Who, who are you? We're the power walkers. Uh, my name's Cotton. <laughs> We're on our way out of here, and you're welcome to join us. Um, we're always stronger with numbers, or you're welcome to go your own way, but you're free to go. Is, is this some kind of a trick? No tricks. We should have brought two cars. But we have to defend ourselves. There will be there will be difficulty getting out of here. All right, let's go. Raymond, you want to lead the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tore down the stairs behind you. Right. You're going to make your way down the hallway um, toward where you assume the other set of stairs is. Is that what you're doing? We're following Shadow. I mean, he came from the wellway. Isn't that where he'd be going? It's where the stairs you, are torn down. You ripped no, you down the entire staircase from the well where you came down. The other staircase that you you know that you encountered some people coming or some guard units coming up out of a staircase, but the only entrance that you know for sure goes down here. You destroyed the staircase to where did shadow take King? I haven't taken him anywhere. I'm right there with you guys. Oh, okay. I keep thinking he uh, took off and we're losing ground. All right. I literally, Hoisted him over my shoulder, walked out of the room, and then Chris has been opening doors. Cotton's been opening doors. Roger that. We could try and, you know, shimmy up the well. I mean, fuck, we've got Raymond. Let's just dig a hole out the side and out. We could do that, too. But we're losing time. If we're going to... You said you there was another way. You guys found another yeah. stairwell? I mean, it ought to be right over here. Well, let's see if we can find it. It's got to be just on the other side of King's room. As you are arguing with each other, appearing out of nowhere, but now she has blue hair instead of white, and her eyes are completely blue. Uh, the the stairs are this way, and she disappears again. Since I had seen her once, do I catch her trail? Do I see the direction that she sped off to? Yes. Yeah, You you know that she headed... Um, past the room where King was, away from, in the opposite direction from where the stairwell is that you came down from the well. Okay, so 
So Shado's just gonna start heading that direction with King. Guys, I'm, the stairs are this way. Yeah, Let's on go. your heels. Let's go. Raymond, get out in front of him in case we run into anything. Perfect. Okay, so Raymond's leading the way. Shadow carrying King behind. Cotton's trailing. Cotton's trailing. Captain X steps out into the hallway. Woo! And is watching you all move away. You pass Teddy um, as you're going. He's just walking along. As he passes into the next room, um, the floor changes from this kind of bare concrete into tile, into like this kind of grayish, you know, just standard tile. And his whole body changes. It looks exactly like the gray tile that is on the floor. And he just keeps walking. All right, I'd like to see everybody pick up the pace a little bit, but that's okay. No, you guys, you guys ran. You guys are, you guys are away. I'm just giving you some details on the way out. You run through um, a kitchen, and you can see a couple of offices off to the side. Um, you get to the end of this hallway, and there is another spiral staircase leading up. There are two uh, two guard units that uh, that Raymond hacked in half with uh, Cleaver. Um, there are pieces of them strewn out on the floor um, in this area, and um, you can get up the staircase. Okay, he's going to bound up that staircase just just as quick as he can, and then right before he breaches the surface, he's going to slow it down and come up easy. Are you trying to be stealthy as you come out? Yep. Okay, roll covert. Come on, baby. Come on. And since you ran 80 feet on a, on a metal staircase before you got to the top... Ah, uh, your dice. You've already you've only got two dice in it anyway, so. And I got two. Two successes. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna tell it. You get to embellish. Oh, okay, that'll work. You come up into the bathroom, and slowly, you know, just trying to peek your head up over the over the edge of uh, the staircase, trying not to be seen or make too much noise. The door to the coat closet that's out there is closed, and. You hear the flush of a toilet. He heard the flush, crept up, looked around, just peeked the top of his head out, go for a hole, and then he's gonna give the he's gonna give the quiet signal to the next person behind him. Shadow, you see Scarlet Spartan turn and put his fingers to his lips like shh. I will um I will go in full on covert mode. Um I know I'm sure I have to roll with some dice missing since I'm carrying King in tow. You're carrying a seven foot lion. Minus two. Got it. Minus two dice. Oh, uh, one, two, three. Three total. You get to tell it, and I'm going to embellish. Oh, no, wait. Um, three, three would be a zero. Um, I'm going to tell it. You get to embellish. Okay. You immediately try to take the light footfalls. And one of King's arms catches um, as you as you slow your pace. His arm swings forward and and bangs on uh, the one of the metal railing. The, the one of the metal railings um, bangs on the metal railing. You know when you hit on a metal staircase, kind of it just kind of makes that ringing uh, sound of a metal staircase. Shadow turns and looks at Cotton uh, with blaming eyes. And tells him to quiet down. Quiet down. <laughs> Shade, you can eat a bowl of digs. <laughs> that was you. That's what Cotton says in game. Yeah. He tells, he tells Shade to eat a bowl of digs. Eat a bowl of digs. Okay. It seems a little out of character for Cotton, but I accept it. Well, he's he's gonna be mad at you for a minute, and then he's gonna fall right in line with exactly what you want him to do very shortly. So at this point, I'm I'm irritable, and I'm just following him. I'm just going to track his footsteps and go where he goes. Okay. Spartan, Raymond, you see a, um, a male nurse come out of one of the stalls of the bathroom. That is zero successes on his perception. Um, and he opens the door to the closet and walks out of the closet. The male nurse came out of the closet. So... I'm confused. We're in the bathroom? The stairwell's yes. in the bathroom? 
Okay. Yes, the stairwell's in the bathroom. Yeah. And he left. You got to walk through the, the closet to get to the other room. You have to walk through the coat closet to get to get back to this bathroom. Yes. Right. He he went towards the exit, though. Yes, he exited out into the coat closet. Okay. I'm going to motion everybody to come on up. Are you guys moving fast, or are you trying to be covert? Oh, I think I'm. Raymond's going to stay with covert. I mean, he's not trying to make any noise, definitely. Shadow? Cotton? And then we jump from here. Covert. Yeah, covert. Sure. Okay, everybody roll covert. Still uh, minus two die for me? Yes, that's not going to change. Cotton got a one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Raymond? Yes, sir. Did you get any successes? One. Cotton, roll perception for me. All right. Two. Two. Okay. So you guys tell me what you're doing. Tell me where you're going. Are you do I need to do I need to describe the room for you where you are do you have the floor map available are you running straight out blasting through a window you trying to run out the front door you trying to go out the side you trying to go upstairs to find george what is it you're doing you guys get king to safety i'm gonna go find george oh my god (laughs) um i mean i just look like a guy george is gonna meet us i know but by the time he gets to 300, you guys are going to be gone. I'm I'm worried about him. Wait, you told him to count to 300? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's walking out there. He can, he can count to 300 when he gets out there. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, I mean, we're parked in the front, right? I You parked. I have no idea. You dropped me off. We're on the opposite side of the building. I mean, that's the car is somewhere over there. But we're right by the front entrance. Oh, by the left side. So we could we could come through and and kind of pound go out the the front, or we could uh, go back out the way we came. With all the guards and the mech units patrolling, I I almost feel like I almost feel like coming out the front door might, in a weird way, be the smartest plan. Might be. Like they're they're probably looking for us around the perimeter. There's a ton of attention back at that well. I'm sure they're still out there looking. Let's just waltz. Can you reach out with your mind? I mean, I, well, I guess that doesn't really work with guard units. Right. If only we had a handful of magnets. Oh, wait, that doesn't work either. Um, yeah. We go out the front. Let's just go out the if front. If it gets hot, you keep going to the car. I'll distract it. You who? Raymond. No. Who's going to keep going towards the car? Cotton? Shadow, get King out of here. Okay. Hey, better yet, let's go to the second floor and then go out the front. As you guys are having this conversation, um, I just feel like (laughs) you 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 feel a tap like on your waist, cotton, and turn around and the little girl, um, the the little girl who was um, in that room that backed up and away from you, she she's tapping you on the waist. Um, If you if you like. Um, there's a, there's a path around, um, the side. You can go through the garden and I, I mean, at at least that's where I used to go hide. Okay. Let's go through the garden. Okay. Are you going to let her by and let, let her lead? Yep. Lead us there, dear. This is going to get us to the car. I don't, I don't know where the car is, but, um... I can I can certainly make sure that that there's a distraction. That would be great. All right, we follow her. She walks right past you. She walks out the closet um, and out into the main um, the main corridor. Um, as you guys are walking bus- behind her, she continues past. Um, she continues walking past the front door, and as she walks past that um, that area out into the front door and and the porch that's out there you see a twin version of her split off from her and go out the front door. And then she continues on as if she's going to go to the other side of the building back towards that hedgerow where you guys were heading uh-huh. through through the building, like out the side door. The, the one that splits off from her and goes out the front door t- 
turns around and waves, and she turns back to you, and, and she's motioning like, come on, come on, and she takes off running down the hall. <laughs> all right, we're all running with her. Weird. As you get um, to the turn in the in the U, um, as if, you know what I mean, you can make the right and go towards the, the top of the, of the U of the building, she continues straight out through through that um, through that porch that's on the on the corner um, and as she passes that other corridor you see another twin appear out of her and takes off down the hallway running toward uh, running toward the top of the, the top of the U toward the back of the building this this other duplicate this other twin waves um, at everybody as she runs off down the hallway you see the duplicate that just came out the twin that just came out runs down a little ways and grabs a red handle and pulls it and the fire alarm goes off in the building. Perfect. <laughs> the girl that was, you know, making the motion for you to follow, the the original, um, she runs out of the porch and runs down the stairs and, and takes off for the hedgerow. Nice. The alarm is blaring. The bell's just ringing, 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 ringing. You follow her out, I assume? Absolutely. Should we Go. roll covert? Yeah, are you trying? Yeah, are you trying to be? Are you trying to be sneaky? Or are you trying to be fast? Fast, and sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. I got a one, a one covert. Okay. I mean, I only have two available, so two, two covert for the Scarlet Spartan, Shado. Three. You all dash across the porch and out that side door. Make your way out towards the hedgerow and. From around the front of the building, you see a, a patrol of the guard units, um, and they see you as you all make your way right out through the hedgerow and, and into the garden area. Let's have a chase. All right. So I want you all to roll agility. Tell me how many successes you get. Do I need to do this at any minus? No, you're strong enough. You're strong enough to move fast. Okay. If if seven might, you can carry King around. I get a zero. Nine. Woo. You get a nine. You get a nine. Nine. I got a three. I got three successes. Okay. So this garden is um like I said before, you know what I mean? This this place is impeccable. This place is is um is sponsored by Lipton. many, many rich people in Renaissance City. And so this garden has this beautiful hedge maze with all this statuary and these sitting areas and these, you know, these, these looking pool, these mirror pools. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit of opulence, you know, but created for, you know, a place for some peace essentially, um, for, for some of these residents, um, Raymond with a nine, tell me where you end up. You are going to end up past um you're going to run past this little girl if you if you want to if you need to but shado and cotton are going to be trailing behind there's two guard units coming from around the front of the building no there's a whole patrol you didn't you didn't stop oh. to you did not stop to count them there there are way more than two right okay kind of like what we've seen before yes you can hear them as they as they see you all, and you all are running. They begin running after you as well. Okay, Raymond's going to take up about the middle of the pack, and he's gonna he's gonna face off with uh, the guard patrol. Okay, I mean he's staying with the line. You know what I'm saying? They're running for the car. He's staying with them, but he's just going to he's just going to keep an eye on situation here. Be ready to launch. So. You're not stopping to turn and face the guards. You're just not leaving your friends behind. I'm staying kind of in the middle of the pack. And, uh, I mean, he does have his body towards the guard, but he's still moving. He got a nine agility, and he's going to look over his shoulder. <laughs> no, he he's just, yeah. No, I get, I get what you're saying. He's looking to intercept any uh, projectile weapons or, or just, Deal with these damn things if need be. Ideally, you get the out of here, you know. Right. You're you're playing the role of protector. You're playing perceptive. You're you're not um, you're not blazing by anyone. You're you're there with your with your squad and and I mean it's your narrative. 
Protecting their three o'clock. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cotton and Shado, Demon Shade, Saint Shadow. I need you guys to uh, either roll toughness or agility as the guard units fire off um, a net out of a standing cannon gun. Right. One of them is running with this cannon gun in his arm and, and fires off nets to capture you. Wait, they're that close? Yeah. Oh, well, hell. He's... I mean, they're not standing right next to you, but they're probably 40 or 50 feet behind you. I got a three toughness. I got six agility. Nice. Well, I rolled two successes, so um, you tell it. Okay, Raymond was trying to defend from stuff like that. Right, but they rolled low, so they didn't get to choose. I chose the narrative side for them. You you rolled high enough that you got to narrate your part of it, but they rolled low enough that yeah. the guard units got to react. All right. But they rolled high enough on their evasion to take over the story because I rolled a two and a four. Good job. Cotton and Shadow, tell me how you deal with uh, these bolo nets that come, that are fired at you trying to trying to capture you. So I am running away, look over my shoulder, and there's a, a projectile coming toward me, my back, and I step to the side and put up an elbow as if to protect my face, and it, it kind of just deflects off my elbow and heads toward shadow i immediately see uh, the, the the spark of of the shot and as it's coming out in full stride one fluid motion i lay king on the ground i do a handstand i spread my legs it goes it goes through my spread legs and as i come back to the ground I grab King again, hoist him over my shoulder, and keep running. One fluid motion. So, so you do like a cartwheel over King, and then as your momentum carries you over, um, you just pick him back up and throw him back over your shoulder and take off running? Exactly. Hell yeah. Yeah. A cartwheel. That's the word I was looking for. Thank yes. you. Yes, I do a cart I do a cartwheel over King. That's exactly what I did. But but you can see it, right? Oh yeah. He like lays him on the ground. He like Oh yeah, you know, totally. Yeah. Yeah, you you pull him off and over um and and you know, using his momentum, you you momentum, you know, you use that momentum to go into a cartwheel and and just grab hold of him and swing him back up and over and just hit your yep. stride and take off running. <laughs> Across the shoulders and keep running. Yep. Yeah, the little girl um she she takes a pencil out of her waistband um, and writes on a piece of paper and says 9.8. <laughs> yes! The girl gets it. She gets it. Damn. She has a crush. It was super smooth. She's biased for cartwheels. That's girl stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a bowl of dicks, Cotton. Ooh. <laughs> okay, everybody roll agility again. All right. Three. Mm. All right, six. Five. I got four. So um, Spartan and Shadow, you guys will get to tell it. Um, Cotton, I will tell it, and you get to embellish. Raymond's going to just kind of keep stride to stride for stride with uh, Shade so that uh, he can defend against anything coming. And uh, he's going to quick sidearm a uh, railroad spike. You're going to throw a railroad spike back at the guard units that are following up? Yeah, that just shot the goddamn net. Okay. Roll agility and add plus one for the improvised mm -hmm. weapon. Four. Tell me how one railroad spike takes out four of these guard units. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Right through their heads, dude. Yeah, they they uh they walk in too tight a formation. There's two of them together here, two of them together here, and they just in a millisecond cross, and that spike goes flying almost as fast as that lady can run, and zips through every one of them right in through the eye hole like planets align. 
Perfect. Shado. W- was something coming at us specifically? No, they're just they're they're run they're trying to run you down. Oh, guard units are just trying to run us down. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I I see um I see Shado sort of I don't know. I'm 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 getting shades of saving private saving private Ryan. You know, he's got King against his his shoulders or across his shoulders. So many cartwheels in Saving Private Ryan. It was fucking amazing. The choreography <laughs> oh, was unreal. He's just he's just trudging through the garden. You know what I mean? He's just as these guard units are trying to like swipe at him or uh, run him down, and he's just he's just dodging and and shimmying out of the way and just you know using all of his best juke moves this is more like forrest gump and forrest and and bubba gump okay that's fair i don't think so do you not remember matt damon getting an oscar for cartwheels in the garden during that movie this is a different fucking scenario i swear to god i will i will i will kill everybody Start with the guard units. That's a bit much. Okay, good. At least somebody's moving with some urgency. Cotton, you um, you are running, you know, with your friends, running uh, as fast as you can move. Your friends are obviously much faster than you are. Um, and you start to kind of get a little bit winded um, as you are being chased by this unit. It's just, you know, you're uh, uh, you're starting to get out of breath a little bit. Wait! <laughs> That's all I got. You yell out to your friends. Wait up! From behind you, um, and behind the guard units, you you see um, this. You start to feel a heat, right? It's not um, it's not burning, but you feel the temperature of the air uh, around you start to rise. Uh, everybody, roll agility. Uh oh. One. One. <laughs> Might have been a bad time to roll a crap dice. <laughs> Damn. What did we just walk into? Six. All right. King is safe. Four. And one more is five. Five successes for the guard units. So um, I will tell it. Oh, no. For Raymond and for Cotton. Um, and I will tell it and you will embellish for, or no, you will tell it and I will embellish for Shado, but let me also roll for Captain X. Damn, I thought it was Captain X that was about to go off. Four successes with three sixes. Nice. Six successes with two more sixes. Hell yeah, show us how to do it. Seven successes. Okay. Okay. Raymond, you hear, you hear Cotton, you know, wait up and being aware and, um, you know, always worried about the six, you turn around to come back toward Cotton to make sure that, um, that he isn't captured or hurt by these guard units and grab, you grab hold of Cotton to, you know what I mean? To kind of grab him up and, and, and make sure that he's moving as fast as you can um, to ensure that the two of you are getting away. And as you as you grab hold of him, that heat becomes much more um, intense. It, it was a cool um, kind of late spring, early summer night. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, it increased to like 85 or 90 degrees. Now it's like 120 or 125 degrees. You are immediately, all of you are sweating, um, just in, just boom like that, um, and and you are all just drenched in sweat, and you see this wave of heat roll through the guard units, and they are chugging, you know, running, clank, clank, clank as fast as they can, trying to catch up to to all of you. And you see them each individually just start to fall apart um, and steam just rising out of all of their joints and their, you know, neck and any any joint that they have in their body. This the steam just starts to burst out of them as they as they slowly collapse one by one and standing running through the middle of this pile of of 
uh, of broken down guard units um, is Captain X. In sepia. In sepia, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's ugly. And the heat starts to dissipate and come back. Um, the, the temperature starts to lower again. Please keep your distance. I don't know. I don't know what they've done with my gear. I don't. I really don't even know where I am. But yeah. But I know who you are. You're on your own. Go, Cotton. Come board. Let's bound out of there, fast and furious. You guys. Uh, you guys make it back to your car. George Buster is standing on the front steps, just outside the porch, as instructed. And you. You get in the car. How many people are we loading up? The four of you, the little girl and George Buster. There's seven little girls. They all have to get in. <laughs> <laughs> no, as you get back, as you get back to the car, um, the little girl that was, uh, that had left and run out the front door, she's standing there holding hands with George Buster. And when you guys approach, she, she walks up to her twin and just kind of melds together with the original. Nice. That's really weird. Wow. That is awesome. You load up in the car and drive away. Yes. Yes. As yes. fast as this is the escape. And George came with us. The little girl brought George to the car. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. They were holding hands. That's right. Yeah. We're all here. President accounted for in the car driving. The gang's all here. Roll out. Where do we end? Roll out fast. Where do we end up? Shadow. Shade, where where can we take King? He needs some help. Lake Hell. I mean, we don't. There's the vet. Lake Hell. Let's go. Let's uh, let's roll to the vet downtown. His office. He's a friendly. He is a lion. Right. You ain't a lion. He's as yeah. much animal. <laughs> start. God damn! Stop. It's just going to be every time now, isn't it? Every time. Every time. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. <laughs> Well, 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 go fuck yourself. Um, okay, you you make it. You get you get to the vet. Um, knock on the door. You're you're down in the basement. You know, it's it's fairly grungy down here. Um in I mean, it's not it's an old coal basement where um he keeps his private dealings, um his his private medical practice, his secret medical practice. You get king on the table and um he starts doing basic assessment and is he going to be okay? Checks the pubic pocket, um, removes the toothbrushes because they're kind of poking out weird. Oh, for God's sake. How, ma- how so, many toothbrushes are there? How many toothbrushes are there, King? I mean, there were 13 after everybody's handled them. I mean, <laughs> God knows. I think there's five probably. Oh, man. He lost so many toothbrushes. You have to resupply. This is a tragic. Tra- this is a tragic day. I mean, truthfully, he's been locked in that room for a hot minute. He's probably used some of them. That's true. Probably eaten some of them. The thing about King is that, you know, he may be skinny and emaciated and missing feathers and hair, but his teeth are pristine and perfect. Right. Gleaming. Gleaming. Ding. Doc, how is he? What's what's the prognosis? It's hard. It's hard to tell this. I'm going to I'm going to start him on some fluids. I'm going to see if I can. See if I can get a feeding tube down him. We'll we'll start with that. We'll see if we can't. We'll see if we can't get him. Medicine's not an exact science, man. Is that little kid with us? I want to. I want to roll to take some positivity from the room and give it to King. Nice. Who in this room? Who in this room do you think has um, has positivity as an emotion at this moment? This newly freed little girl. She's been trapped with no hope. Is she here? You didn't drop her anywhere. Okay, so she came with us, uh-huh. and Buster's with you. And Buster's with you, too, yes. Okay. Happy as a clam. Yeah, roll telepathy. I'm going to give him the good feel. Five. Yes, you you grab hold of, of, this, um, of this hope that this little girl has. And, I mean, I'm going to assume on the car drive that she probably, you probably learned something about her, maybe? Um, or you just drove in silence the whole time? I'm not really sure. Yeah, Raymond was going to do that now. Oh, okay. Then we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, You change the emotional state of the veterinarian. He's not quite as nervous as he was, and um, he starts working diligently. um, And 
No. <laughs> Did I miss King? Are you trying to put the positivity in King's mind? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were trying to give it to the doctor. No. I want the doctor <laughs> to be real. I want King to be positive. I want to lift his spirits. Oh, okay. There you go. So, sure. Yep. You you uh you add some hope and some positivity to uh, to your unconscious alter ego. Nice. Attitudes everything, folks. Yeah. It does make a difference. It's true. It absolutely makes a difference. What's your name, kid? I'm Patricia. What's your name? I'm Raymond. Hi, Raymond. I'll shake her hand. She shakes your hand right back. You have some really funny looking hair. Yep. Do you have a sunburn? Yep. You should probably put some lotion on. That's what my mom tells me to do. Yeah, we're dealing with this one first. Maybe, maybe, maybe this doctor has some lotion. Hey, Mr. Hey. Mr. Doctor, do you have some lotion? He's got a pretty bad sunburn. Thanks for back there. You did good. Thank you. I did. Patricia. I did good? Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Buster, what'd they do to you? Raymond, it's been, um, you know, the wife and I, we, uh, we were sleeping in our room and, uh, these, these four guys broke in and, uh, kind of beat us up a little bit <sighs> through, through these sacks over our heads and drug us out in the middle of the night. The place is trashed. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, we could, we could hear the ruckus going on as, as they were, as they were dragging us out. It was, uh, it's been a long few months. Uh, they've basically kept me just drugged up. It seems like I don't, I don't even know what they want. I don't even know what they wanted or shade. Yeah. Do you think that, uh, we could get Buster and his wife out of town? We'll lay low somewhere. You know where you're out of town. I I'm not going anywhere. Why, why, why would I get out of town? These sons of bitches, they got to pay for this. What's to keep them from putting another sack on your head? I don't know, but I don't, I, at this point, I don't care. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to the press. This is ridiculous. Innocent people like me being treated this way for what? You're an escaped inmate from an asylum. What are the police going to do for you? There, there's got to be some kind of justice for this. Come on. They're going to put a sack on your head, Buster. Raymond, you can't expect me to run and hide. We're going to make justice happen. Don't you worry about that. Well, I want to be a part of it. We're going to get you a gun and you come with us. No, I'm not shooting anybody. That's not, no, that's not my style. Buster. I've, I've been, I have been the name and the haven for powered people like you for the last three years. That's who you got to go talk to. I lost my sister because some asshole, too much. No, I'm not run. I'm not running from this. Your powered come. George, that- George, where's Edith right now? I don't know. I would say focus on finding her. That's where you should start. I know you're angry. We're angry too. We all got the same mission. But none of that matters if she's locked up somewhere and she needs your help. Find her. She's probably at the same place. You got to go back. Hey, Doc. Come on, you got to tell me something. Is he going to be okay? Is he going to live? It's it's hard hard to tell. I mean, he's he's definitely have to take some time to recover. I don't I don't know. Um, I mean, this is a this is a what's the fucking metaphor? Um, Fuck you, dogs. Monkey soup over here. Fuck you, dogs. Shut the fuck up. It's a vet's office. It's fine. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Guys. Now it's perfect. This is, this is the one time it's appropriate. Yeah, fair enough. That was, that was vet yelling back at the dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he treats his clients. <laughs> fuck you, dogs. <laughs> fuck you. I mean, That's you right. know. Well, there, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of compassion um, in in any Leave form of in. medicine. Um, oh, right. That's true. I mean, dogs. and look, he he's been an ally for a long time, so no judgment, right? You know, right? He wants to, he wants to tell his dogs to fuck off, like that's who he is. And that's that's a little be. bit, though. I mean, because you know, Raymond adopts stray dogs. Oh, shit. These are this is uncharted waters for me. You know, uh, I, I I've never I've never dealt with 
someone like him before. So I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I, I Is there something you can do to stimulate his senses and maybe make him come to? I, I, I don't I don't know how I don't know how wise that is. Can you put sausage in him for nourishment? I mean, let's be clear, Raymond. You're the analyzer. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He loves sausage. Who do we know that has healing powers? Uh, we don't. It's actually one of our greatest, uh, our greatest uh, shortcomings as a team. We have no healers and we don't know any healers. It sounds like one of them walks into our next scene. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been so banged up. We need a healer yet. Till now. Well, truth be told, we don't need it. You know, King does. Right. Those of us who are conscience, conscious. Pump them full of fluids. And Put them on the couch at the love shack. Let's go take care of business. What is taking care of business? Are we kidnapping the mayor? You goddamn right. All right. Yep. Long overdue. Let's do it. We're going to give Buster a gun. And we're going to explain to Buster what the fuck is going on. Because Buster's like, I'm going to go to the cop. Well, look, I mean. You won't take a gun, though, dude. If there's a if there's a normie who will get it, it's Buster. Right? I mean, because of his clientele for all those years. Right. So, and he's an ally to powered people. So, like, he ought, he'll understand. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah I mean, not only will he's he understand, but, it, but he also won't be as skeptical, right? right. Because right. he's like, okay, like, he already lives in a world where, where these things happen. We're little kids split into other little kids. That is a trip. I, I didn't see that. All right. So Captain X, he's an X ray guy. Then there was, the fast chick. There was the guy that could imitate colors. The chameleon. Yeah. Yeah. Not patterns. Not the and, the, and then there was this this uh, woman that can split herself, or this girl that can split herself into multiples. Yes. Yeah. What's interesting is like, did you get the sense that each multiple could act on its own? Or do yeah. you think it's right. like a hive mind sort of a thing? No, weren't oh, I they? I think they act independently. Yeah. That's a crazy uh I mean run off and wave. Is it like uh is it like did, did you watch the the Unbreakable trilogy? Have you seen all of them? Yeah. 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 Oh, so yeah. I wonder if it's like do they compete for the light? Are there multiple mm. like is it all the same personality or is each one different when it splits from itself? Ooh, I like that. We're writing our characters we go here. We can Meta we can Meta, embellish. do you want me to tell you? Sure. No, no. I'll. I. You can yeah. send me a message. I'd like to know. I would too. All right. Break it loose. The little kid is that one talk about Patricia? Yeah. yeah. Patricia. Yeah. Yes, Patricia can duplicate herself multiple times, and they are independent of each other. But are they the same girl? But does each duplicate have a unique personality, or is it the same core personality, but they just have? Individual, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like individual freedoms, individual. We were imagining they have the same personality, they have the same memories, they have all of those things, but they um, they act independently and think independently, but they share. Um, you know what I mean? When they come back together, all of their experiences are all of their experiences. We were imagining a physical embodiment of multiple personality disorder. Yeah, I was, I was, I was philosoph philosophizing. That was like, uh, like in the Unbreakable, you know, series where each personality is vying for the light. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to copy that. Um, I love that character though. That's a freaking, I, I love watching that. Such a cool character. Honestly, Unbreakable is probably my favorite superhero movie. Um, it's great. I think, I think the other two. I love the characters. I think um, I like I, I I mostly like the way that it wrapped itself up and in together. I don't think they were spectacular movies. Glass and um, 
What was the other one called? Split. Split. Yeah. I liked Split a lot. I liked Split. I did too. Yeah, I liked Split a lot. And but it was Glass the character, was, right? I mean, right. Yeah. And well, it's totally right. Of course, but yeah, no, I mean that's right. And also the actor, yes, because he was fucking yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Mac, oh, Mac he was incredible. Mac is a fucking incredible actor. Yeah, yeah, and he was amazing in that, like fucking amazing. You did know? he win shit I mean, for that? I mean, no. I thought that was next level. No, no, but it it, it was great. Like maybe I don't know. Maybe if you were like a uh, somebody that voted on such things, maybe you would consider it camping, but campy. But as a fan, oh. I just thought it was as a just a Gen Pop audience member. I thought it was fucking amazing. Yeah, no, he freaking killed it. I thought it was great. He did what it was designed to be. Yeah. And, you know, he had enough depth in the characters that we got to spend time with. Yeah. And the it was kid, a kid, the kid, the mom, the OCD guy. You know what I mean? Like, there there was enough depth in those. Yeah. Kevin okay. Walter Crumb or whatever the hell his name yeah, was. Yeah, he's good. But, yeah, and Glass was okay, but I was just, I thought it was a good wrap-up. I enjoyed it as a ending to the overall story. Agreed. But standalone, kind of an average movie. I didn't like that character for Sam Jackson, to be honest. No? I don't know. It just didn't feel right to me. Like, it felt forced. Just, the first time around? I mean, all the way back to Unbreakable? Yeah. It just didn't feel like a natural role for him. He didn't. I, I didn't feel like he fell into it, right? Mm. Anyway. So, um, as we're standing there, watching King, worried, um, there's a knock at the door of the vet clinic. <laughs> You're going with this. Okay. And the vet, the vet wanders upstairs and opens the door, and in comes this guy. <laughs> Just looks like a standard, regular guy on the surface, wearing a, wearing a suit. Got a got a little pocket protector, and just looking really sharp, well dressed guy. Does the vet go up to answer the door, or do one of you go up to answer the door? The vet does. The guy insists on coming in, and the vet tries to stop him, but he walks right past and comes down in the basement. I'm a healer. I I hear you need a healer. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this? I'm fucking around. And what's around, this dude. guy's name? Uh, there's no healer. I'm just fine. Yeah, go with it. 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 His name. <laughs> What's his name? Why you got to ask me? Because that? you would ask his me. Name. You created him. What's his name? His name. If someone's is, knocking uh, on the door, Raymond's getting rid of him. No, hold on. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Chris. Oh, Dean. 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 Let it go. Chris is, Chris Let is, go Chris, is uh, Chris is rolling with story. What's his name? His name is Gary Montague. Gary Montague. Okay. Very dressed very sharply. He's a sharp dressed man and he's from he's from the Florida Keys. Nice. And and he's up. He's up because he felt the need to heal. The vet leads him down the stairs and he trips at the top of the stairs and falls all the way down and breaks his neck and dies. And dies. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Gary Montague, the short lived character of Gary Montague, ladies and gentlemen. His name was Gary Montague. His name no. was Gary Montague. <laughs> nope. We don't know his name. Say his he name. didn't get he didn't get a word out. No, he said I'm I'm a healer. I'm Gary Montague. Yeah. I'm from oh. the Florida Keys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the Florida Keys. And then he tripped and he broke his neck. <laughs> it's, it's tragic. Between this, this is great. Between this and the pubic pocket, the pubis pocket, I'm just, I'm just wrecked today. I'm the shriveled wrecked. pocket, yeah, yeah. The shriveled pocket. And- okay, Rammer's gonna go search that dude's briefcase. <laughs> nice. You're gonna and search the healer's full. briefcase. Yeah, Gary Montague, and it's full. It's full of Spanish gold and one needle full of serum. That's glowing red. Guys, I I feel like we should inject that into King. Oh, Lord. (laughs) 
So I agree. Okay, go ahead. Um, inject it into King, and then I want you to roll medicine. <laughs> oh shit! I got a two. Somebody else inject it. Everybody's be, got twos. That, I've got one. Raymond has one. Oh fuck! I'm rolling it too. No, Here we go. There was a book there. He he administers shots. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. We don't know Gary Montague. We don't know where he got. We don't know what this is. Are you sure you want to inject this in King? It could have a a wildly different effect than than you're anticipating. Right. He may I mean, he may have tracked us from the listen from where we cotton. From. Cotton. I know you love him. I know you miss him. We want him healthy. But uh, honestly, this this could be more of a risk. Are you sure you want to yeah. do this? I'll support you in whatever you want to do. But are you sure that this is are you sure you want to take this risk sight unseen? This man just walked in this in this room and said, I'm a healer. That, Let's that inject could, he, it. He Let's could he could be working into Gary. He could be working in for the faceless, you know, for the for the for the mimics. It's true. It, it, Guys, right? I mean, let's inject it into Gary. Gary Montague has a suitcase full of Spanish gold. Somebody paid him a lot of money to come here and finish the job. You can't put that in King because he was gonna. All right, you're right. I give up. Fuck it, King. Heal slowly. And delete. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're not deleting yeah, exactly. my fucking character. I just created yes. a character. No, I'm not deleting it at all. It's fucking... Are you kidding me? It's happening. <laughs> all right, so we have a dead man with a briefcase full of Spanish gold and a red glowing serum syringe. All this There's is happening. That used to have a briefcase used full to have. of solid yep. gold. There you go. Used, used to, have. to have. Okay. Now you are the proud owners of... A briefcase full of Spanish oh, gold no. and a and a red and a syringe full of red serum that you have no idea what it is. Cotton reaches over and injects the serum no. into oh, Gary Montague's arm. Roll medicine. God damn it, Chris! <laughs> he's gonna fucking like, turn into a zombie hole. He's gonna no. He's gonna come back to life. And then I got a two. He's gonna take his Spanish gold back. Oh, we're going to kill him. You got two successes? Yes. <laughs> nice. Wow. Very grotesquely, he oh. snaps back up into place, and his, his head is kind of hanging to the side, because he has a broken neck. <laughs> and he flops his head over to the other side so that he can turn and look and, and see you, you all. E. Uh... What what happened here? Has anyone seen my Spanish gold? <laughs> Raymond, I think I've got a crick. Put him out of his I think I've got a crick in my neck. Can you save King? Does anybody? Does anybody know a chiropractor? <laughs> He's gonna have to save himself <laughs> at this point. Gary, can you help us save King? He's got a floppy head. <laughs> yes, I've got a I've got a syringe of of a, a serum um that was created and it was the only dose known in the world. Uh <laughs> <laughs> how did you get here? How did you know to come here? Um He's an agent. The killer the troubadour sent me. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck. and uh I was um I was I was taking this gold. Um, I was supposed to. <laughs> gold. I was supposed to. What gold are you talking? This the, my briefcase full of Spanish gold. <laughs> Has anybody see seen it? And he flops his head over to the other <laughs> side, trying to look around the room. And he flops his head back again. And he flops his head back again. And he's trying to turn and look around the room. Oh, and Patricia. Okay. Patricia pipes Wait, in. We can't handle it, sir. Um, our our friend. Raymond, um, he he took the he took the briefcase. Patricia, look away. Raymond's gonna tetherball this guy's head. No, don't, Raymond. It's not worth it. He was a he was an ally of the Troubadours. 
This guy. Come on. <laughs> he can't go on like this with his neck hanging like that. like that. Well, it's his life. He can choose. He can Gary, choose. Gary, do you want to live? I guess he died. He died <laughs> already. He already died. He lasted <laughs> another like five minutes and then he's out. All- <laughs> well, Gary's he dead now. That gold bag. He tetherballed his head until it's. Spun off and flew across the room. No, and now there's now the, a, and now there's now a spray, a neck spraying blood all over the room. <laughs> oh my god! Cotton quickly catches his medicated blood in a funnel and lets it pour into a syringe. Okay, Shado looks oh, at everything happening. He looks at everything happening. He reaches in his pocket. He enrolls. The 9.8 that he was given, he, he smiles at it pensively. He rolls it back up. He puts it in his pocket. He says, I really thought you guys were professionals. <laughs> and Shado walks out. But he gets stuck at the door because he can't figure out the door handle. Nope. Clean exit. All right. Moving on. This guy is gone. He's dead. Is he dead? God, thanks. Yeah, you just spun his head you off. Just, you, just, you just fucking you just tethered all his, his head, head off or whatever. Are we really going with this? No, no. we're being dickheads. <laughs> we were just being extreme for fun. Yeah. We hadn't even come back yet. All right. And we're back. It was a really nice moment of Shadow trying to, you know, humanely and um and passionately get cotton to get cotton some kind of emotional relief right in his in his grieving well and uh you know of course as he always does shado advocating to save a life he's all all for the saving of lives as long as they yeah. don't cross me <laughs> he's, still, he's still a good guy okay so where do we pick up from then? So, Doc, would you say that, I mean, the best thing we can do is just get him home and get him rest after you get some food in his belly? I I would say that it's going to take more than food in his belly. Um, he he probably needs to at least stay here a few days. And you know what I mean? Let's let's try to let's try to get him some fluids and get him some nutrients. And I mean, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know, you know, I mean. Does he does he have a blood type? You know what I mean? Could we even do a you know, I mean, do I I don't I don't even know. Um it it's I'll stay here. Are you willing to care for him? I, I don't I don't I don't have any straight answers for you at the moment. It's gonna I, I gotta I gotta run some tests. I gotta, you know, I gotta I gotta figure out what I can as much as I can before I can even give you a Doc. diagnosis. Doc, you, you got a coffee maker, you, you got a, a, a stove top upstairs? Yeah. In some some coffee grounds. Sure. Yeah. Hey, let's let's me you and Raymond go have some coffee uh, upstairs, and, and why don't we give Cotton a minute with King? Yep. I feel like Cotton might have some things he wants to say. Patricia, Buster, let's go. Everybody, let's let's all let's all head upstairs, have some yep. coffee, and think about it. And let and let Cotton have a minute alone with King. Good call, Shadow. Let's go. Okay, the room empties. All right, quit fucking around. Get off this bed. We got work to do. King, come on, man. We need you. I can't do this shit without you. You know that. I don't know what you're about. I don't know why you're in my life, but I need you to get back back after it it's time for you to get up off this table i need you we need each other right now i need you to come back to me be in the room so we can figure this thing out together cotton Mm. yeah yeah it's cotton i'm here don't ask me how (laughs) We haven't figured that out yet. But I'm here. And we have work to do. You're hurt. 
but you're going to come out of this. What happened? Who did this? Some motherfuckers that are going to pay. We're going to get you healthy. We're going to get you whole. And we're going to take care of business. I'll be ready to fight again soon. Ugh. Where have we been? Ah. Uh, I'm kind of a mess. What's happened in my head? I'm feeling shit I'm not used to feeling. I know, I know. We're both a mess. I, I can't explain it either. We're out of balance. But we're going to find a new normal. And we're going to use it to our advantage. Because that's what the Power Walkers do. Renaissance City is a Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition actual play produced by TTRP Theater. Jazz Abramowitz is Demon Shade. Chris Freedom is King and Cotton Dearborn. Dean Martin Jr. is the Scarlet Spartan, and I am Duke Walter, your Game Master. Thank you to the generosity of our Patreon supporters, t 67 Kamui, Adam Lake, Elira, Matthias Olson, Izzy Skirmish, Mr. Cultist, David Hagberg, M. Lemody, and Jess Rogers. If you would like to join as a producer, please search TTRP Theater on Patreon. We are at Ren City Pod, R E N C I T Y P O D, on Twitter. Also, make sure to check out and follow at TTRP Theater on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure to leave a review of our podcast as this helps to get the word out about our game. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time for more Renaissance City. Thank you.